see you this this morning. Good to have you back with us. If you would, would you open us in a word of prayer? Amen. 501. 501 will sing the first, the second, and the third. <coughs> Vacation Bible School. Amen. Had a good time this week. If you didn't get to come by, you missed a lot. And had the kids had a good time. Uh, June the 27th, we'll have our deacons meeting at 6 p.m. 
Then uh, 4th of July, we'll have Independence Day. You know, we have celebrate the birth of this country. That we were founded on religious freedom and the right to worship the Lord. And, you know, our country is not stuck with that as strong as it should, but we still have the freedom to of religion and we want to celebrate that and remember that remember what July the 4th is about and then July the 30th through August the 2nd we have our get right with God count meeting with Dr. Hamlin we're looking forward to that and y'all be in prayer for him and all that we'll have for that brothers y'all want to come take up the offer in fourth place Brother Jimmy, would you ask the Lord to bless the offering, please? did I stuck my finger in that page so we'd be right where we need to be well actually I did it just to carry my book but I just happened to realize that hey that's the same page I had my finger in the right place so if you'll turn to 500 if you're not there already we'll sing all three verses <coughs> Bye. 
divine, saved to new life, sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete, for I'm saved, saved, saved. Amen. Now, I hope y'all don't mind, but I wrote down some thoughts. And uh, I wrote down the thoughts because here lately, if I don't write them down when I'm thinking, I won't think them again for a while. So I wrote this down. By the way, happy Father's Day. Everyone you've ever met, loved, cared for, or cared for you in your life was not an accident. And you have the choice to love them, care about them, and let them care for you. Since being saved... You do not have the choice of whether or not to be responsible that they hear the gospel. God commands us to tell a lost and dying world the good news. That means the people closest, the ones we work with, strangers we meet, he, put, uh, he puts all in our path of life. Someone, or maybe several someones, accepted their duty to tell you about Jesus. And you're here today and heaven bound because of them. My folks, I thought, were the best in the world. And I'm sure y'all did too. And then they both got saved. Just when I thought best couldn't get any better, it did. I saw a difference that Jesus made in them to the point where I wanted to know what made that difference in them and their lives. Suddenly, they had a different focus. Their lives were centered around Christ and the kingdom of God, desiring all the, that God had placed in their, path, in their life's path, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. One night, at the urging of my mother, I went to a revival meeting. Didn't have a clue what a revival meeting really was then. I accepted the Lord that night. I realized heaven and hell were real places. Hell wasn't where I wanted to go. If I'm going somewhere for all eternity, it seemed a no-brainer. Someplace nice and safe seemed a whole lot smarter choice. I miss them so much. When I think back about them and not only how God placed them in my life, I think of all others who God placed in my life. You know, you get to thinking about God, and, and uh, I'm like a preacher going off notes right now. I'm chasing a rabbit. But you get to thinking about things. And almost every time I start thinking about things, it, I get to a point where I'm thinking about God and all he's done for me. And I've had some struggles here lately uh, with mobility and, and health issues and everything. And, uh, and old Satan knows when you when you're, have a weak spot. And that's where he hits you the most. And uh, I got to thinking how I'm dependent on the kids more now and they can depend on me less because I can't do as much as I used to do. And uh, vacation Bible school, I was more of an observer than anything else. Um, well, I, I ate some food, too. I won't let that go away. But, uh, but I found myself just observing when I used to be. I used to be the one in, like, the, uh, the, the what, what are they, dinosaur suits and, and different things like that. Oh, I, I never had air conditioning. That's, that's all right. I'm afraid my hair would stick up again after going under the balloons. But I, I, that's another thing. I even had to get the pastor to help me down off the platform after going under the dinosaur chin. But my father was always one of those uh, take charge kind of guys. But when Jesus moved in, he realized who was really in charge. Even though it seems I have more family in heaven than here, my family here has grown by leaps and bounds. Grandbabies galore, each a precious soul that needs to hear. Each visitor, each new family, and those God puts in our lives, each one will, will make a difference in our lives. And God will use us to make a difference in their lives. That's why I love this song God gave to me, to honor my heavenly father, my earthly father, as well as all those in my life that have taught and shaped me to this point, God's still working on me, but I would be lost and undone if God hadn't put people in my life as he did, as well as trials that he's put in my life. Right. 
Santa called this morning. I can't believe he's gone. Thought he'd be here forever. One more time, time proved me wrong. It seems just a year, a week ago. But I should call and say hello. Now I'm reminded once again. Life's a vapor in the wind. Bibles this morning, turn to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter number 22, Ezekiel 22, now I'm not going to do it, thanks for reminding me though, Ezekiel 22 and verse number 30, happy Father's Day to everybody, to all these fellows that are fathers and have the had the opportunity to be that. And some of you younger ones, maybe one day you will have the opportunity. It's a big deal and a big responsibility and a big heavy load. And even though it is, you, you wouldn't take it back. 
Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. I'll give you a minute or two. Hope everyone had a great week. We did at Bible school. It was a great time. Um, 42, 42 ch just children uh, Friday night had a big time. Um, I believe God helped people. I know He helped the workers. Uh, every worker, um, I believe, understood the role they play. That um, you make a difference in people's lives and if you don't participate, you don't make a difference. That's right. So those that have the ability need to keep at it and keep doing it and thank God you have the time and ability to do it because you make a difference. Uh, I was telling the fellows up here earlier, one of them was making a statement that the children did a lot of work. Uh, I said, that's, that's what I've been saying forever. Uh, our job's the manual part. And um, when our kids turned about five years old uh, and they went to school, we never from that point on uh, went to Bible school without two or three loads of kids. Uh, we would dump kids and go get more kids and bring more kids because our kids invited kids. We, we always uh, impressed upon them uh, to do such and with impressing them meant that we had other stuff to do. We had some manual labor to do and that was take our time and spend our time and spend our money and spend our efforts and spend our cars and everything that had to go along with it to make that happen. And if you want to build a church, uh, you're going to have to do that. That's a fact. Somebody help me. Uh, it's been said over and over again. Curtis Hudson used to put it this way, and I haven't repeated him in a long time on this subject matter, but you will not build a church on spare time and pocket change. It will never happen. You say, well, you, folks always start quoting Scripture that uh, if God doesn't build it, it's in vain. Uh, listen, we, we, that's kindergarten, folks. We way past there. God can't bless us if we don't do anything. We're, we're way past God doing it. Uh, we're, we're in the business of letting God do what He wants to do. Uh, and in the midst of that is us doing what He wants us to do. And that's where we are today. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30, the Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. God, help us this morning as we endeavor to speak about the subject of the value of one good man. I, I pray this morning when we leave, God, that that you will help us understand that one fella that will do what he ought to do makes a big difference. God, somebody has to stand in the gap and somebody has to be that one. Not a lot of flapping of the wings and running of the mouth, but God, somebody that will stand steadfast and be that one by example and do what they say they do and not lie about it. Uh, God, help us today to be that one good man. And we'll thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. As we start this morning, just to give you a few little quotes. Not, not Baptist preachers aren't the only one who thinks about Father's Day. Okay? Uh, uh, preachers aren't the only ones that have to deal with that. If you're a daddy, uh, you've gone through a Father's Day. You've got some ties. You've got some shirts. Uh, you've got a hard time sometimes, but you've gone through some things. But being a father, a good father, being that one good man, takes some effort. And listen, sometimes it just feels like sometimes it ain't worth it. That's just as Brother Ken said this morning, the devil punching you where he knows he, you need to, he wants to punch you at the time. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, Train up a child in the way he should go, but be sure you go that, that way yourself. Now, that means don't talk about it and then not do it. Dwight L. Moody says, A man ought to live so that everyone knows he is a Christian. And most of all, his family ought to know. You can fake it at church, but you ain't faking it at home. Now, that's the truth. Billy Sunday said it, Be careful, Father. Be careful, Father. Or while you are taking one lap around the devil's track, your boy will make six. 
Uh, hey, hey, Father, that time that you're out doing what you ought not do, uh, dreaming about things you ought not dream about, thinking about somebody else's wife, living another life other than the one you ought to be living. Hey, your kids should do it six times over. Don't be mad at them when you do it first. Right. And that's not Brother Bobby. That's Billy Sunday said that. Guess what? They dealt with that back then. Ronald Reagan said this, All great change in America begins at the dinner table. You say, well, how does that fit everywhere? Daddies need to be there. That's what he said. I didn't say it. He said it. You want to know what's going on? Be there. People ask me about my kids. I say, my kids aren't perfect, but I knew what they did. Brother Bob, you didn't know what your kids did. They thought I knew every breath they took. They really did. Maddie still makes fun of Allie over how she thought I knew it all because me and God talked. Kids know whether you're fake or not. Henry Ward Beecher said, the most important thing a father can do for his children. Y'all have heard this before. The most important thing that a father can do for his children is to love their mother. That's the truth. Number one this morning, three small points this morning. I've been doing, trying to do better and do things a little bit different. And uh, listen, three points this morning. Value the value of strength and leadership. Amen. Well, we're weak in that in America. Right. Well, I thank God this last week that the Southern Baptist Convention got a backbone. Listen, have y'all not heard about that? Oh, listen, I thank God they did. You say, are you, are, are you glad? I'm glad they took a stand. They're not my enemy. They took a stand. and I warned y'all about a fella, and they took a stand against him. And he wrote books that everybody in the world read. Every religion in the world read his book. I warned you, and they throwed him out. I've been having a ball ever since people at work showed me. Having a fit. Somebody has to be strong and somebody has to be the right leader even when it seems like everybody's against you. When the whole world seems happier the other way. If everybody's for it, listen, we, we still have a path that's the straight and narrow and few there be that find that path. That's still the truth, folks. But the Bible says in Psalm 106, verse 23, Therefore he said that he would destroy them had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to, to turn away his wrath, wrath, lest he should destroy them. Again, somebody to stand in the gap. Trying to find somebody. And he said, but that man, I knew he'd do it. If God looked at you fellas this morning, and I'm just asking, I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching to you for us. I mean, our country is in a slump of men who will just do right. It's hard to do right. Let me help you. The devil will fight you if you're going to do right. The devil will make you think your world stinks if you try to do right. The devil will try to tell the preacher your church is going nowhere. It's what the devil will do. And then on a Friday night, I'll step out and I'll go, Hey devil, where are you at tonight? Where are you at tonight when there's 42 blessed young people here learning and hey, God's allowing us. Where are you at now? Where are you at now when He's allowing us to do that? Where are you now when He's letting us give the gospel to them? Where are you? Tide's turned a little bit on you, dude. It's not working as well today. Uh, and, and you'll never know it unless you stick it out. Yeah. Yeah. Fellas, somebody's got to stand in the gap and there's value to strength and leadership. The average man won't stand. The average man won't get in front of the, in the middle of the breach. They won't get in the gap. They won't stand in the way because they're weak-minded. Yeah. That ain't in my notes. That's free. The average man's weak-minded. If the average man will let his son be weak-wristed, he's weak-minded. That's still the truth, folks. It's still in the book. 
The average man won't stand in the breach. The, the average man's not found when you need him. The average man's too busy. He's too busy. The average man, their schedule won't allow them. The average man says this in their mind if, they're not, if they don't have guts enough to say it out loud. They say it in their mind, that's somebody else's job. I'm not called to do that. You're called to do a lot as a daddy. You're called, a lot to, you're called to do a lot as a father. There's no ownership of anything anymore. Pass the buck to every, pass it everywhere. Not, nobody can stand in, the, stand in the breach anymore. Psalm 22, 11 says, Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Hey, fellas, you ever feel like there ain't nobody to help? Your kids are mad, your wife's mad, everybody's mad, the work's mad, everything's going haywire. That's just the devil trying to get you to quit. It's all going just fine. Keep standing in the breach. Keep staying there. Keep being the one blocking your family from what the world has to offer. Amen. Keep blocking it. Nobody's going to do it if you don't do it. Amen. Matter of fact, somebody will slip in if you're not watching. That's right. Stand in the breach. That's our job. The average man won't persuade God. See this verse... The average man won't get before God and try to persuade God. They don't know Him well enough. See, it's not an easy task to get before God knowing you need something and, and, and getting God's attention. You say, well, God already knows. He won't bless what you don't ask for. I mean, honestly, does the average man trying to persuade God, does he have strength enough to fight if God let him? That's too quiet. Hey, O thou man of God, are you strong enough to fight? To bow up, be somebody? The ability, in other words, the right, right with God. You've got to have the ability to get God's attention in a minimal task. If, if, hey, fellas, if you're not right with Him... You're not going to persuade him much. The average man can't tell God why he needs him. The average fella can't. He don't even know what he needs to tell God anyway. Well, I'm living okay. They're arrogant today. The average man today is arrogant. They're not humble before God. See, I said strong, but if you're strong, you're humble before God. We'll get there later. Because you get your strength from Him and you know it. I know fellas that are strong but they're weak with God. I know fellas that are strong and their household's a mess. It's hard to be the man. But can I tell you, every man in here can be what they ought to be. Every man can. When my when my granddaughter comes over, I sure am glad that I was able to be a father. Because then I was able to be a grandfather. Yep. Most of y'all know that well better than I do. But I'm just beginning to get it. I'm so glad when they pull up and I'm on the lawnmower, she does this. <laughs> to me, that in my mind, it's saying, hey, Pop, can I drive that thing? <laughs> Because I know I can. Not scared of nothing. You know how many fellas don't get that because they don't take the stand and they just don't end up being what they ought to be? They're not trusting God for it. Listen, fellas, you can make decisions and be strong and your decisions stink. You, you, you want the ones God wants... If he's wanting you to stand in the breach, if he's wanting you to stand in the gap, then he's wanting to, you to make good decisions about what's going on there. N not your own. Man, I've known when I've made my decisions. I've known that because they didn't turn out good. <laughs> but that's just a fact. It's truth. 
Number two, Genesis 18, 19, For I know him, that he'll command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The value of that role model. Now the value of that role model, having faith in the ways of God. I could have beat my kids to death to do right. You're going to do it or you wish you hadn't. You wish you'd had. It's a difference when they know why they're doing it. If, they're going to walk, if I'm going to tell them they've got to walk after me and, and they're going to have to see that I'm not lying to them. Yep. That I'm not lying to them about it. They can know I make mistakes. But they also know God deals with me when I make mistakes. Amen. And, and the mistake when I'm saying no, on purpose, whatever, I just didn't do the right thing and I knew I didn't and I had to go repent of it. Now, you, your kids know whether that's right or not. Your kids know whether you're right with God or not. Daddies, you're going to make mistakes. Men, you're going to make mistakes. But the value of you being that role model. See, God said about Abraham, He said, I know He's the one that will do it. I know what he's going to do and he'll command his children and his household after him and, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. Not a mandated foot on throat mandate, but they know Abraham's with God. He knows God and they want to see, live it because he lives it. I'll serve your God. He's real. He does big things. The problem in our household, daddies don't have God doing big things. They just do a lot of flapping. Now I'm going to talk out of line. Brother Larry will understand this. Other fellows might not. I might not even should have said that. I'll tell on him. If you're going to be a bad dude, a lot of squawking and flapping gets you nowhere. If you take two game roosters to the pit and one of them does a good show, I mean, it looks like he's tearing up Jack. It doesn't take but the right spot. And the other guy's hung up. And it's over with. He did a lot of flapping. That's a lot of show there and a lot of dust flew. And at the end of the day, nothing happened. But the other dude said, you messed up when you sidestepped because you're mine now. And you're dead. See, that's illegal because they kill each other. That, the average man can't fight because all they're doing is flapping. The jaws are flapping and they're, they're showing, having a big show. A lot of dust is flying. And when it's all over with, it ain't even been a good show. That's what most daddies do today. They're not the men there that are standing waiting for the right time. You messed up, now you're mine. Because I'm badder than you are. Because I know God's on my side. I don't have to get caught up in all the stuff. I'm waiting for the right time. I hope that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me because that's all I'm just... Anyway, it makes a lot of sense to me. And don't anybody go saying I'm a chicken fighter either. I just know about that from my years past. And some things I learn, it's funny how you learn it. And God uses it for something. Yep. You don't have to be the biggest fellow to win. Amen. The role model of faith, think about this. Hebrews eleven six says this, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. Hey fellas, view the right role model. You can't be that role model without your kids seeing your faith. Amen. If you don't have any, it is impossible to please God if your faith is void. Amen. It's impossible. You, you can't take it out of the good book. You can't make up something else brand new. Right. God said if your faith isn't real, 
You can't please Him. Amen. Quit lying about it to yourself. Quit lying about it to your family. Quit lying about it to your church. Why don't you just bow up and expect, and expect God to do what He says Amen. and let God do something in your life. That's real. You ain't got anything to tell if God hadn't done anything. Amen. Don't use my examples or br brother whoever's examples. You need some of your own. Amen. Your children need your examples. How God took a family that was upside down and He turned it into Amen. something good. Hey, it doesn't matter your family was jacked up. It's good that God changed it. Amen. That's the testimony. That's right. Forget that back there. Just let the world know, well, they used to be, and that's all they got to say. Amen. But when God came in, something changed. Right. I'm proud my parents used to tell me, get over stuff. I'm yeah. glad of that. Amen. But there was a time in life as a kid I wanted to know more than get over it. I didn't understand the principles that daddy was teaching me, working hard. You know that. And, and, and a lot of times I don't know that he knew the principles that he was teaching me. God was just using a daddy willing to be a good daddy to teach some principles that maybe he didn't even realize he was instilling. But because of him being the right kind, I got them. I did want to know just the difference other than why am I doing this? I don't like doing this. It's a long road to hoe, but after I got to be an adult, those rows got longer and I understand why I hoed some real rows when I was little. Abraham, think about Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 4. God said Abraham was to be the father of nations. What He said about him. God said, I know this man and I know what he'll do. If God looked at you this morning, good fellow, would He say, I know this man, He'll do the right thing. He'll do the right thing by His family. He'll be the right leader. He'll go to Hillview and He'll be the right kind of man in church. He'll do what He ought to do. He'll stand up and say the right things. And He'll go home and bless your holy name. He'll do the same thing when He gets home. And He'll be the same thing at work. And He'll be the same thing at Walmart or Kroger's or wherever. He'll be the same kind every day. There won't be no leaving church and cussing everybody all the way home. Foul mouth, loud, stupid acting. Hey, that doesn't help anybody. There are folks used to tell me you can't say stupid in church. There are some folks that are stupid. It's an ugly word. I learned it was ugly when I was little. But some people ought not act that way. It is ugly. And folks ought not act that way. And to be right with God, you won't act that way. Think about Abraham. He was old when he began. When God decided to do what he was going to do. I mean, God already knew when it was going to happen. This wasn't new to him. His wife was old. Ain't no other way to put it. God's going to start doing something with them when they're old. Hello, folks sitting around here think you're old. Don't shine. Don't, don't, don't. That's like preachers who sign out when they hit a certain age. Well, we're going to end their retirement. You wasn't much of a preacher anyway. I don't know how the man of God retires. I mean, we got this now. You say I'd gum, I'd gum a mic till whenever. Well, that, that, I don't even use this. It ain't even on. So I don't know. How, I don't understand fellows that can quit loving their church and leave. Amen. Now, if I get feeble and can't do it, that's different. God already knows that. But I'm gonna turn 65. Hey, good folks, God's leading me into retirement. That's a lie. I just don't want to do it anymore. Why not be honest? Hey church, I'm tired of this. Y'all make me mad and I quit. That'd be better than lying about it. And you hear preachers do it all the time. Take your wife and float off into wherever. Well, keep floating. Get away from us. It's a bad influence. And I'm, hey, I use them because they try to pull God in their trouble. But it's no different than everybody else in church. The old age. God started using them when they were old. God knew His faith. Amen. 
God knew his strength. Maddie sent me a little picture, and I was going to have him put it up there, but I thought about it too late. Maddie sent me a picture when she was like four. And I used to get on the floor and do push-ups, and she'd, she'd, she'd hang around my neck and get on my back, and I'd do push-ups. And, and she'd try her best to get me down. And I'd just keep doing push-ups. She sent me that picture today, and she said, think we can still do that? <laughs> Yeah, that was a no reply. Just let her think I can. I won't have to lie about it. God said he knew the path that he would take. That role model of faith, that the value of that one fella, that God says, I know you're the model. I know what you'll do. I know him. And I know he can get through. Abraham had a lot of rough times. God going to let him kill his only son. And Abraham walked up there to do it. <laughs> Genesis 22, 8. And Abraham says, my son. See, he's dealing with his kid. See, there was no fake worship that day. There ain't any driving to church, cussing and fussing and cussing the preacher and I don't care what he has to say today and I'm going to do what I want to do and I don't care what he thinks, I'm going to do it my way. Hey, no, it was him and God and the little boy going to worship and Abraham said, God will provide. That's right. yeah. And let me tell you what he did. You won't find, <coughs> what was the son's name? You won't find where Isaac fought with him. You won't find it. Hello, you won't find it. But when old Abraham drew back to worship, drew back to worship, drew back to worship, God said, hold on a minute, I already got it. You provide himself a lamb. Now, I mean, just how many fellows in here believe God really can? I mean, I, I mean, just believe God really can try to live by it. Yep. Every week's different at Hillview. Y'all know that. I know that. So I told uh, Daniel the other night, little Daniel the other night, I said, Daniel, if you'll, Miss Tammy's little grandson, I said, if you'll draw me a picture, I said, I'm going to put it on my wall in there with these other pictures, but you've got to draw me a cool picture. Now, Brother Vaughn found it, and he accused me of being in there drawing during Sunday school. But I think Brother Doug put him up to that. And I said, there ain't no drawing. That's finger paint. Y'all get this right. I'm finger paint. But Sammy took it upon himself to make me one, too. So Sammy drew a picture of the church. And somehow or another, I'm up here, and he's right there. He picked Sammy and Bobby, as he said. And he wrote it all out himself. And he said... You're the best church preacher ever. I love you. Man, that'll make a puppy pull a freight train. That'll make a puppy pull a freight train. But you don't get that every week. There are troubles and trials in life. People need your help. Because they really do. But who's going to be there to help? Daddy. Who, who's going to be there? This life's rough. Think of the model. Think about this, that, that, that model. It's of faith, but it, it, in, in our faith to provide wh what our family needs monetarily. I mean, it talks about, I mean, I mean we got to live, so we got to provide. I know a good wife helps. There's nothing wrong with a good wife help. Helping, you can find in your Bible where they sit at the gate and sell things. You find your Bible, instant, for instance, after for instance, of where women are doing what they do because it's an equal partnership. Right. And don't say, Brother Bobby said 50-50. I know what God says about the man being the leader. And I also know what God says about men treating their wives like Christ loved the church. Yeah. <coughs> I preached that so many times here, I could be blue in the face. I mean, all I ever do is preach on men. 
I'm tired of preachers beating on women. If they're going to act right, bless God, a man ought to be the role model. There's a lot of forgiveness that Christ does for the church. Every single day of life we go to Him as the bride of Christ and, and have to ask, we go and we repent. As 1 John 1, 9 says, we go and we ask because we've messed everything up. Yeah. Amen. You know what He does? Forgives. Right. Provide for our family physically. Provide for our family emotionally. That's hard sometimes. But who's going to be the one to look at the wife and the kids and say, it's going to be all right. It'll be all right. We ain't going to talk about it again. It'll be all right. Wait and see. It's going to be okay. Provide for the family spiritually. A lot of cock-a-doodle-doing and wing-flapping. We couldn't get a good fight if we wanted one. Fellas, if we, we're going to provide spiritually, then we got to be the spiritual leader. Amen. I, I, listen, my wife doesn't give me my sermons. God gives me a message. She doesn't. There are times my wife, she says, I'm going to tell you what you need to be preaching on. And I say, I'm going to tell you, God didn't tell you to tell me that. <laughs> I know you can preach. God just said you're not supposed to. Right. But go on, tell me what I need to be preaching on. Numbers chapter 12, and verse 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were on the face of the earth. He was meek. You, Brother Bob, you just say he's supposed to be a strong leader. He is. Yeah. So number three, the value of a meek man. The one who will lead with showing patience. and The one who will lead showing humility. The one who will lead nurturing in gentleness. That's all Bible, folks. See, God said it. And we can't dismiss it. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And he stood between God and those people many times for God not to destroy him. And, and him standing, are we still here, folks? Yeah. Standing in the gap. Again, you find a man in the gap. But he was meek. He was humble. He tried to be gentle with the crowd. God's the one who came down with the mandates. God told them they weren't going in. God said, all of you are going to die. Go roam around 40 years. None of you are going to go in. 2 Corinthians 10, 1, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. He said, In all that I know to be, meek and gentle. He said, When I'm there, you know, you know how I am. You know what kind of preacher I am. You, you know how I lead you. You know how kind and, and how meek I am. But when I'm away, I'm bold because you're hearing me from away. That's why I've said so many times, uh, Baptist preachers and, and the ones I grew up with, they could get in the pulpit and blast everybody's guts toward the back door and did not even try to help clean it up when they left. They beat people to death and we wonder why our crowd's nothing anymore. They stomp the guts out of them. Yeah. Whoop them every week. See, I can preach hard because it's what I'm supposed to, but during the week, i got to be the one who's there to help, and to guide, and to understand, and to love on the folks. See, I can be strong, I can be strong with my kids by George, this is how it's going to be, and we ain't discussing it. Do you get it? 
And then a time passes and they fail at what I've said. They fail and they know they failed. And they're afraid to tell me. Well, one, we already know there's got to be discipline to help fix what was there, but <clears throat> they got to learn. How many stinking times have we failed? God didn't wipe us out. They had to learn. Daddy's kids make mistakes. Hey, daddies, fathers, husbands, your wives going to make mistakes. Mine does. And I like to point them out. <laughs> Y'all might not think I do. You ask her, well, she can get belligerently angry with me. She might not even speak for a day or two. I don't like that. Anybody like that? Let's just be honest, fellas. I don't know if y'all are weak, weak, limp-wristed or whatever, but if my wife's gone two days and she ain't give me a smooch, I'm not feeling good. I didn't marry my wife for her to be somewhere else. I didn't marry my wife for her not to talk to me. I didn't marry my wife for her not to give me a peck on the cheek, a smooch, I don't, whatever y'all want to call it. I, I didn't do that. I didn't marry for that. I didn't marry some ugly old wench. If you did, that's your problem. You and God talk about it. I'm trying to tell us that none of us did that. So let's not act like we're better than everybody else. It's not always easy to do what you want to do and what God wants you to do. It's not. Quit acting like we're better. That We grew up in an age where the men acted like there was never any wrong in my home. You know what I found out about that? I have found since I've been grown... The preachers that I grew up under when I was at, in Manchester, their homes were jacked up. Yeah. When I say jacked up, they had troubles. Yep. Yeah. Stuff happened. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about the flat top wearing preachers. They ain't nobody, it used to be nobody was right with God unless you had a flat top. And then there came time where it was black hair and it was greased and slicked around and that was the only ones you could be right. Don't let it make you mad. I'm just saying that's the way we grew up. It's the truth. Can I ask you something? Who affects your home? You. It's you and God. You come to church, you need a message. You need to know how to get home and sometimes you need some guidance. Sometimes you need to come to church where you see that big detour sign. Stop what you're doing and go back over yonder where you need to be. It needs to be that way. And sometimes you need to know God loves you even though you messed up. That's a fact. God still does love you after you mess up. He didn't okay you to mess up. He's not going to be okay with you messing up. But He'll forgive you if you'll ask Him. That's the truth. He doesn't wipe you off. And let me help us right here. God, and I, I grew up thinking this. I grew up in churches that, hey, bless God, if you don't act right, He'll kill you. Somebody find that in that King James Bible. Right. We live in the age of grace. It's not in there. Amen. If God killed everybody that messed up bad, none of us would be in here. That's right. and let, let's quit being pious about it like we're all better than everybody. I've never messed up. You're a liar. Right. Yeah. The Bible says you are. If you think you've not sinned, you've lied. You have. Now, I'm not okay in sin. You know better than that. But I'm trying to tell you, God loves you. A meek man will understand that as he leads strong. Amen. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-six: 26, The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek Him. The meek, those fellows that know how, those that will slow down and listen, you know what they'll do? They'll eat and be satisfied. The proud fellows go to church and they get mad. I don't care what he says. It ain't my book anyway. It's God's. But to me, they'll come get a mouthful and sometimes it might be hard to swallow, but they'll swallow and they'll be filled. Figure out how to deal with things. Psalm 27, 11, The meek shall inherit the earth. Psalm 147, 6, um, he, uh, he lifteth up the meek. And Matthew, sometimes I can't read my writing and I, 
I know it when I write it, and then I can't tell what I've said. It's got a lot to do with my eyes. Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek. 1 Peter 3, 4, think about this one. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. I know who that's talking about. But God said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. He's telling us, hey, in here, we ought to have what is an ornament Amen. of a meek and quiet spirit. The whole world doesn't need to hear your bluster and how bad you are. You can be bad to the bone and everybody doesn't have to know it. And meek at the same time. Meek. I found a long time ago when my kids were little, sometimes they needed discipline. I didn't like that. Anybody in here like that? Whatever discipline was, it had to be discipline. They, I don't care what the world says today, they, they were in trouble. And I'd tell them, now you go in your room. I never threaten my kids with the Bible in God. You're not doing a thousand write-offs of a Bible verse. I don't care who says it. I don't care. Amen. You don't find that in your book. You ain't doing a thousand write-offs of a Bible verse because you did wrong. You'll teach your kids to hate the book and it's your fault. I just tell my kids, I say, go in there and talk to God about what's gone on. And if you and God figure out that I'm wrong, I'll apologize. And they would come back every time. Tears in their eyes. Every time. None bar, every time. And they'd say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. There comes a time of being strong, but you better be meek at the same time because there's not one of us that hadn't failed. But you can still be strong. Jesus said, and I'm done, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now Jesus said this. I, not, not Brother Bobby, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. When, now wait a minute, we're fixing to learn something about Jesus, right? Yeah. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. In the, in the element of a meek and lowly heart, you, that's everybody in this room, you can find rest under your souls. Amen. Can I tell you, I need rest. There are things that are stressful. There are some parents here, I know they're stressed out of their mind. Raising kids, rearing, raising, I say raising, I know it's wrong. My English teacher ain't, ain't here, so it don't matter. <laughs> raising kids is hard. You don't know what to do. There were, there, and I'm just going to tell the story. There were two little boys out on the swing the other day that were boys. They were brothers is what I meant to say. And all of a sudden, the cat fight out of this world began. That swing went in every direction. They were flogging like two banny roosters. I mean, this stuff, dust was flying. And I mean, they were just, it was on. I was sitting on the rocks out there just watching. I said, well, I'm going to get the best of them in a minute. And in about 15 seconds, one of them flew off and go running to the door. I said, where are you going? I'm going to, you ain't going to tell nobody. Well, he, I said, you ain't telling me what he did. I'm sitting here watching what he did. And you and him did the same thing. Now, you're not tattling. I said, because I can't stand a tattler. I said, my kids got their back ends blistered for tattling. And the other one, I don't care if he bloodied their nose. They didn't get in trouble, but a tattler got blistered. I said, you're, and I wasn't screaming at him. I just told him. I said, you ain't telling anybody. Because I'll, I'll go tell both of you were doing it. So he went and he sat down around behind the tree and pouted for a while. I said, hey, you can sit over there a while or go play. I ain't, whatever. Does that make me mad at two little boys? No, they're little fellas. Don't bother me. I hope it didn't bother, I hope it didn't bother the parents. I'll go tell on both of you. Because I watched you both. 
And you're going to go lie and say you didn't do nothing. Can I, all I'm trying to say is, can I tell you parenting is hard? When they're little, it's hard. I mean, when they're little bitty, I, I worry about it. It worries me to death when they bring Ellie to the house and we got to keep her. Now, listen, I can't hardly stand it for her, waiting for her to get there. And most of the time, I go by, swing by, and pick her up and bring her home with me so I get her quicker. But when nighttime comes and she's got to go to sleep, parenting is hard. Yeah. Worries me. You say, you ought to trust God. I do. And I also know I had to trust God when I dealt with mine when they were little. And it's hard to just think about what we went through way back when. Parenting when they're little is hard. When they're a little bigger, you're worried about everything they're going to get into and touch or maybe eat or do. Because right now, when she gets a little bigger, she'll eat anything. Then they get a little bigger. And then they get as big as you are. And the trouble changes. And, pa and parenting is still parenting. It's hard. Being that daddy is hard. I, I, there are a lot of times I didn't like it. Now, I tell all the cool stories at church about what my kids did, but behind the scenes there were things I had to deal with. Now, I'm not saying I had bad. I tell everybody I had good kids, and, and I, don't tell, I don't say anybody around here has got bad kids. I wouldn't tell a soul that because I don't believe it. Them two little boys fighting, they ain't bad kids. They're kids. And the way I understand it, Grandma knows how to get their attention. <laughs> I learned that way back when, when she got one of them by the ear and pulled him over there, right there at that chair. She pulled him over there on a great day we were having here at church. She pulled him right over and she said, don't make me get you again. And he understood what she meant. I was like, that's good. I like that. I can remember being little, getting in trouble, and I'm still a kid, so I'm like, ha, ha, you're getting it and I ain't. I hope she gets you good. But it's It's hard. Oh, is it not worth it? Amen. When, when you come out on the winning side and you go, ha, 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 it worked. You don't know it worked until you come out on the winning side. Yep. Right. It's okay. And, and, and every now and then, just don't, if you don't do it, I know you're more religious than, than I am. I know you're better at it. But every now and then, I know you're fleshly. I know I'm flesh. Let's get it back to me being flesh. I know you're better than I am. Every now and then you go, you're around somebody else's kids and you go home and you hug yours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My kids, I, I've got a text from not too long ago. I sent a text to my girls and I said, thank you, I love you. Maddie immediately sent it right back. Okay, tell me whose kids really stink. And I'm like, that's not, today that's not what I'm doing. I'm just telling y'all thank you for being good kids. But she just knew that I'd done run into somebody's kids and I'm like, oh my, I'm like, Maddie, you're overstepping there a little bit. <laughs> hey, fellas, the value of one good man. Be that man. Amen. Today's your day, be that man. Just roll around in it. It's your day. Amen. Not what you deserve. Just roll around in the fact that I'm that man at my house. I'm that man. God's going to let me do what I need to do. No matter how hard it is, He's going to let me do it. Just roll around in it. All right. Be like them kids out on the playground. Just roll around in it. Miss Abby had to come in to clean the seats. She had to wipe off dust and dirt off these seats from where they, <laughs> they physically rolled in the dirt and played in the dirt and and, and she had to clean it all. Hey, just roll around in your day. Come out on the other side looking like you've rolled around in your day. There's great value to good men. Don't feel bad because you go through trouble. God says count it all joy. Because you're going to go through some things. But count it that God's going to help you. It's going to be all right. It's rough today, but it'll be all right. My kids have told me things and I'm like, hmm. first thing you want to do is just lose your mind. Then you just, best thing to do, you just look at them and say, how are you going to fix that? Well, I ain't fixing nothing. That's your mess. 
What do you think I need to do to you? Ain't nothing I need to do to you because you've got to fix it. Let's see how you do. You've got to be able to be a good leader. Meek and lowly in heart, but strong at the same time. Letting your kids know that God knows who you are and He's on your side. That's who we are. We're, we're God's men. O oh, thou man of God. Listen, fellas, O oh, thou man of God, saved, born again, heaven bound, you're a father that God has allowed you to be one, O oh, thou man of God, then we ought need to act like one. Be who God's called us to be. And we got good fellas at Hillview. Don't ever let that go. There was a family that came this week. And I was talking to the father outside and or actually right back there about where Brother Greer's sitting that they were behind and I sat down and I turned around talking to them and, and I said, we're not the biggest thing in town but, and we're not trying to be. I said, but we've got a community that needs to be affected and it needs to be affected in the right way and that's what we want to do. I'm not always going to tell you what you want to hear but I'm going to tell you what's right. And he agreed with it and he appreciated it and fellas that's just who we are who's going to do it we are God thank you for today we bless your holy name for everything you've done for us we love our men at Hillview they're the best fellas in town we appreciate them and we care about them we, we want every man here to be the right kind starting with me not if I'm not the right kind of leader and God I worry they won't be God, I preach that they ought to know you and that's the truth. And at the same time, I, I know I ought to be the right kind. And I pray, God, that you would help us today to know the value to be that man that will stand in the